after an extended leave of absence, Lara Croft is back in Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness for the PS2. Uh, this game's been a long time in the making and was promised to be sort of a re-envisioning, a reinvention of the Tomb Raider series, now with kind of a darker edge to it and, and all new mechanics like a stealth gameplay. The first screens that were released of this latest Tomb Raider game made it look more like a Metal Gear Solid or something than like Tomb Raider. It had Lara uh, sneaking up on people and, and kind of uh, about to snap their necks or something rather than uh, jumping through catacombs and the sorts of things that uh, are familiar to fans of uh, this long-running series. Uh, in, in reality, this new game is reinvented to some extent. It is darker. It's, it's got a pretty uh, engaging story to it, more so than uh, some of its predecessors. Uh, but it's also got some really, really serious problems. The story begins when Lara's former mentor is murdered, and she's the only one at the scene of the crime. There's been a, ser a serial killer on the loose in Paris, uh, which is where this all happened. And, uh, but but Lara kind of looks in the mirror, and she's not sure what happened. She's shaken, and... She's not sure, maybe she's the one that did it. Maybe she killed her mentor in, in the heat of the moment. And that's sort of the initial mystery that you'll have to uncover, even as you're fleeing from uh, Paris police in order to try to get to the bottom of what happened and, and uh, try to get some answers. There's actually much more to the plot than just a murder mystery, and soon enough there's a secret society involved and some ancient paintings and, and uh, all kinds of much bigger and grander stuff. Uh, the story is actually pretty epic and and uh, really quite engaging if you let your you, if you let yourself get far enough into the game to experience it. It's probably what's going to be the motivating factor for you to keep uh, pushing yourself through some of the game's w uh, more frustrating moments because you'll want to know exactly what's going to happen and uh, how everything is going to be resolved. You'll run into the problems with Tomb Raider uh, really early on. Uh, the the initial portion of the game is supposed to be kind of a tutorial where you learn uh, Lara's various moves, like her ability to cl uh, climb onto stuff and grab ledges uh, while jumping and uh, th things things of that nature. Uh, but you'll experience, you know, in the very first moment of the game that Lara, uh, even though she's supposed to be this kind of uh, agile adventurer, uh, is really it controls a lot more like something like a cement truck or something like that. She's, uh, it's very hard to move her around. There's a very noticeable delay in the response time when you kind of push the analog stick in a direction to where she actually begins moving. And simple actions like uh, aligning yourself parallel to a platform so that you could easily jump to the other side uh, are made difficult because you, you can't even turn easily in this game. And, uh, you know, Tomb Raider fans may be used to this to some extent because the Tomb Raider series has never been known for its uh, really responsive control. But if anything, the control seems worse than ever in this latest game, and, and that really uh, hurts it quite a bit. It's going to make it so that uh, people who aren't fans of the Tomb Raider series aren't going to give this game much of a chance. The good news is you can get past the control problems, uh, you know, basically after hours of suffering through them. Um, and then, you know, you can start to get somewhere. Fortunately, you could save your progress at any point in the game, and you'll really have to because oftentimes uh, Tomb Raider the Angel of Darkness uh, devolves into sort of trial and error where you're just, uh, uh, you know, attempting the same jump over and over or just trying to figure out um, a situation that's very unclear, like where you're supposed to get to in some big dangerous cavern or something like that. You'll keep falling to your death time after time, uh, possibly dozens of times on end. There are all these little things in this game that, that just make it tedious to play, kind of a textbook case of, uh, you know, things that you shouldn't do when trying to make your game fun. It's, it's really too bad, again, because, you know, some of the actual action in this game is, is pretty entertaining, and, and the, the animation for Lara looks great. And there's some really death-defying leaps and, and some pretty big shootouts and stuff like that. The new gameplay elements in the game don't, don't really add up to that much. Uh, there is a stealth mode now. Uh, Lara can creep up on people, but she really doesn't have to. Uh, you could just blow them away, you know, from long range. The enemy AI is so stupid that uh, there, there's really never... Uh, much of a situation where you need to rely on stealth even though it's constantly an option that's available to you. One of the other consequences of this is that the properties of your jumping will shift over the course of the game. You'll, you'll start to be able to jump further and uh, you know between the bad controls and the fact that the jumping is uh, being tweaked a little bit every now and then you'll never quite grow comfortable uh, with your ability to, to jump more than likely. You'll just uh, you know never quite 
be able to know exactly how far you're going to go. So pretty much, uh, like I said, you're always going to be falling to your death a whole lot. You die a whole lot in this game. If you don't like dying in games, this game isn't for you. Tomb Raider's got some other glitches. There's some graphical problems, like you'll often see uh, Lara's shadow just projected onto nothing, like when she's climbing hand over hand, uh, you know, on a rope or something, you'll just see the shadow floating in midair. Uh, there, there's clipping, enemies will kind of clip through objects, and sometimes Lara will. Um, and, and then there's some more serious bugs, like uh, we, we had the game crash on us a couple of times, things like that. I mean, it, again, this stuff, uh, as you play through the game, uh, you're, you're bound to run into some of this stuff, hopefully none of the particularly serious stuff. And it's too bad that the game has these sorts of bugs in it, because there, there really is a good or even a great game uh, underneath it all. Uh, there, there's just a lot of variety to be found here. Uh, the, new, the new focus of this Tomb Raider means that there's a very good juxtaposition of kind of modern day environments, uh, like at the beginning you're, you're in the Parisian ghettos and you go to the Louvre Museum and, and um, you're, you try to get to the top of like a dance club and things like that. And then you've got the more traditional Tomb Raider type stuff, uh, ancient catacombs, uh, long forgotten temples and, and things like that. Um, you've, you've got, you know, big, huge, wide open spaces and tight, narrow, cramped spaces. Uh, there's even a new playable character uh, for, for some portions of the game and not, certainly not a majority of them, uh, named Curtis Trent, who's got some of his own animations and, and unique moves, although he largely controls just like Lara and controls just as bad for the most part. The game would look great were it not for kind of the graphical glitches that, that you'll encounter t uh, time and time again, really. Uh, but the, the environments themselves look, look very good, and, and there are some nice high-res textures and some nice ambient effects, things like that. So again, when you, you know, walk into some of these gargantuan temples and, and elaborate galleries and things like that, you'll probably be pretty impressed. Uh, the game sounds very good as well. It, it, the audio is probably the best thing about this game, in fact. Uh, there's some excellent voice work for all the main characters, and, and the musical score is just uh, f fits the game perfectly, uh, no matter what area you're in. Um, it, it's too bad that the music cuts off when you're uh, when you pause the game and when you go to load and stuff like that, because otherwise, you know, that might have helped alleviate some of the some of the frustration of having to reload your progress again and again when you get to one of the tough points. So this is a game that just can't be wholeheartedly recommended. It's got it's got too many obvious flaws uh, to be able to you know give it to someone and say here have fun with it. There there are just too many caveats here. Um, if you're a hardcore fan of Tomb Raider, uh, if you're a very, if you consider yourself to be a very patient gamer who can uh, readily overlook certain big flaws, uh, then this game has something for you. It's it's got some uh, cool stuff to see and and some cool plot to experience. Hardcore fans of Tomb Raider and and very patient gamers are going to be able to overlook most of these problems and and enjoy Tomb Raider: The Angel of Darkness uh, for all its good qualities. Unfortunately, most gamers probably won't.